question. How would you get pixel perfect collision on any shape you can imagine? Would you open up your fancy game engine and draw your collision shape point by point, replicating your shape perfectly with just a few clicks? Maybe, if you were smart, but I'm not smart. And I'm not using a game engine. So I instead chose to use a little file called a PNG, and I'm gonna show you why. This is Elixir Punk, a sprite stack survival tower defense automation game. That's a mouthful. Take the gameplay from survival sandboxes like Terraria during the day cycle, add tower and base defense mechanics at night. That's the game. In the last devlog, we got a first crack at the building system. There was a surprising amount of backend work that went into this and it was still just the absolute basics. We ended up with a ton of rendering and sorting issues and some absolutely wild performance drops. The game was shaping up slowly. We had a real problem on our hands. You could just walk through blocks and trees. There was no cohesion. It didn't feel like a proper game world. And not only that, but you combine that with the sorting errors we're seeing and oof, this thing looks undercooked. In this episode, the goal is to add a collision system that automatically places a collision wreck every time the player places down a block. And I want collisions to work with any kind of shape we have for a sprite stack. As a bonus, we're also going to tinker with some shaders and whip this depth sorting madness into shape and get the game looking and feeling crisp. Raylib is a wonderful library that comes with some handy functions for checking rectangle on rectangle crime. So it was pretty trivial to get those drawn on the positions of my trees. So if there's an overlap, we're going to see the overlap data here. So you can see that the, uh, the data is running here. We're going to cross them with this tree and we're going to see overlap found. Oh. Look at that, it's still running though. Why is it being added to this frame? After some transform mismatch rendering bugs due to some faulty origin point calculations, I managed to get the collision wrecks being drawn correctly at the base of every tree. Okay, that seems to be the correct position now. Check that one, yep. Check that one, yep. Does this work for all? That's working, working. However, once I got that into the game, I quickly realized this was the wrong approach. Now, one thing we might want to fix is the fact that you can't like walk in between here, which might be annoying. I went back to the drawing board. What I needed was a way to generate a collision shape based on the roots of the tree and ideally extend this to any other shape I make in the future. I had two thoughts here. The first, was there a way I could somehow leverage my existing texture data for collisions? I swore that Pygame did something similar. But after I looked into it, and by looked into it, I mean I consulted with the Oracle, I was told that rotations weren't supported with how Pygame did it due to converting the texture data into a bit mask. And this would have to be recomputed every time the sprite was rotated. This was an immediate red flag for me because the positions of the quads are actually shifted to maintain the illusion of 3D, including rotation. The second option was one that I yoinked from my brief time with Godot. Godot essentially lets you draw a polygon on an object and use this as a collision shape. That was perfect but I wasn't about to code in a collision mask editor. So instead I decided to do some research on how I could generate a polygon around my pixels. I would only need the bottom of the sprite stack theoretically, but if I could somehow draw a polygon around it, I could leverage Raylib again here. The second option seemed like my best bet. So I separated my texture from the Atlas, generated a black and white version of it, where all the white pixels represented opaque pixels to be used for the polygon data. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. There you go. That is the bottom layer. I spoke to the Oracle again and was told about this nice little algorithm called the concave hole algorithm that served this exact use case and was perfect for what I needed. Okay, that's a bunch of polygon points. What do they make? <laughs> what is that shape? Does that, what does it do? I spent a non-trivial amount of time whipping this up only for the final result to look like a Um, sort of? I guess. I coped for a little bit. I mean, that looks like almost the right shape. It's kind of flipped. No? Almost looks like it's fucking backwards. No. But soon after, I realized this couldn't be salvaged and needed to be scrapped. Going for a new approach. Or 
the original approach that I was put off of. Uh, so this is just a slice of the bottom texture. So it should match up perfectly with what the bottom slice actually looks like. This approach was actually much simpler than generated polygon. And I found out that the mask doesn't even need to rotate. The camera is rotating yes, and so do the upper portions of the sprite stack, but the bottom of the stack actually doesn't move an inch. This means that during setup, I could just generate these textures for every sprite stack in the game during loading, and we can access them at runtime per stack we want to draw. All I need to do is give it the collision mask component, and it will work for any stack we have in the game. How this works for detecting collisions is actually pretty simple. We store the image data and then offset this to the world position in game. Then we check the alpha channel by indexing an I plus four because the image data is in a flat array stored in RGBA format. And if the data is anything over zero, we have an opaque pixel and therefore a collision. Oh shit, all right, check this out boys. We got a little bit of an ooga booga loop going on. So there's a lot of checks happening. Boom, true. Now, obviously we don't wanna run this check every frame for every tree in the map. We should only care about local trees and check those. So I started developing a basic chunking system where we add a chunk component based on the object transform and position in the world. Now we have our pointer and now we can set this to, what is this? And we pass in our position. Okay, let's see if this actually updates now. Zero, there we go. Okay, one, beautiful. This should be, yeah, this is X2 coming up. Yeah, beautiful, okay. All right, time to resolve these bad boys. Usually in a 2D game, best practice is to use the future position of your player and then detect if they're going to collide next frame. You just get their direction and speed and use that along with their current X and Y position to get a predictive movement vector. Then you add that to their current position and bam, you can see the future. Okay, and we're getting true over here. Um, we're getting blocked and we're not able to move, which is I think exactly what's supposed to happen if our direction's getting reset to zero every single time we have a collision, so. Now onto the juice. If a player gets stuck when they collide, that feels really bad. A lot of games get around this by allowing the player to move in the opposite direction and slide along the collider. So if a player is walking and hits something on the X axis, they can slide in the Y direction easily. Similarly for Y, they can slide in the X direction. Now the way I'm doing this, which just feels wrong by the way, is by separating the X and Y collisions and running loops for both, iterating over the same set of entities twice. I'm sure I can produce this to a single loop with a few more brain cells, but until it's a bottleneck, I am worried. You can now see how that one little PNG saved your boy lots of pain, but I wasn't done yet. Basic collisions were in the game, sure, but what about these rendering issues? It just looks weird when the player is colliding with these tree roots, clipping through them instead of actually being drawn on top. We gotta fix that. Currently, there are two different rendering systems in the game. We have the instance ones powered by OpenGL and the individually drawn ones that I'm rendering through Raylib. There are some fundamental differences between the two, namely how their depths are treated, which is causing the issue. The main difference comes down to the actual calculation made when the data is processed on the GPU versus the CPU. I'm fairly sure on the GPU, these are normalized at some point, so they are in the range of negative one to one or something. I don't know. I just tried a bunch of stuff and when it didn't work perfectly, I scrapped it and ported the Raylib version to OpenGL, which holy shit was one of the best decisions I've ever made with this project. What the fuck? What is this? What is this? What the fuck? Hmm. Now they are upside down. Oh, wait. Rotate. Camera rotation is what I need. I was using the wrong rotation. This is always going to be zero. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. With the trees and grass now coexisting peacefully, the player still needs to be civilized into the game world. Okay, dude, sometimes, sometimes the Oracle knows what it's talking about. I mean, in this case, I still had to figure it out myself because it gave me some bullshit, but, but at least it told me about GL frag depth, huh? Look at this. Is that not the fucking sexiest shit you've ever seen? Huh? I don't know why. I think I have two different shaders going on here. And when I animate it, it's going to a different shader or something. Okay, also this is not. That's fucked. Okay, but look at that, huh? Ooh. So the UVs of the texture were changing to play the new animation in the sprite sheet, but because we were using the texture coordinate itself, this caused the shift in depth. So to combat this, I of course poured it over the old rendering system to OpenGL once again, and then passed these in via an offset per sprite instance. And of course, I also took the opportunity to implement bindless textures here, so I wouldn't have to use a texture atlas for all of my sprite animations. Uh, was that overkill? Almost certainly, but I felt like a chad for doing it, so I did it. With the player depth civilized and working hard for the economy, I felt like the development of this collision system was coming to a natural stopping point. 
but then I remembered that I had just implemented a building system last video. Shouldn't those blocks also have collisions? It was time for the ultimate test. We want to use everything we've built so far and have it just work. As a recap, we've created a collision component and system, an all new rendering system, depth handling, a chunking system, and even a bunch of shit I didn't go over because it'd make this video too long. All that work. Countless hours toiling over the keyboard. All for this moment. This one glorious moment where it all comes together. The fuck? Shit. Hang on. I got up at, at 5.30 this morning um, to get a bunch of work done and to try to fix this bug, but I have no idea what the fuck is causing it. Entity that we draw on the mouse for the ghost blocks should not be returning any data here, right? Because this doesn't have these components. So it should be hitting this early return statement and then just not running this. But instead this code is getting run and we're returning some null values and just crashing. Oh my God. Entity supposed to be first and then the mask. I was doing mask then entity. So, and because the mask was zero, it was treating it as the player who has all this bullshit. What, I gotta get a fucking microphone stand or something. Oh, this is getting picked up by my sprite stack system and not my new one. Hey, hey, I think we got it. Yeah, baby. Nice. That looks good. And we got rotation and everything. Yeah, we got some fuck shit happening here, right? So like, if I assume the player's not retarded, it works as expected, right? But if they start doing some fuck shit, we end up with some, uh, some fuck shit. Beautiful. That was fucking annoying. There we go, no artifacting. What the fuck? What? There we go, baby! Beautiful. Well, well, well. We meet again during the outro sequence. If you stayed this long, you might be enjoying my content or at least getting some tiny shred of insight out of these videos. So leave a like, subscribe, oh, and leave a comment telling me what I should add to this building system. There's still a long way to go, but the path forward is pretty clear. If I can stop from rewriting the engine a fourth time, we might even have a playable game by the end of the year, but don't cross your fingers. I'll find a way to rewrite this thing again. Mark my words, boys. Once again, thanks for watching. If you want more frequent updates, I post pretty frequently in my Discord server. But other than that, the best way to stay up to date right now is just by subscribing. Interact with the video for the algorithm. Much appreciated. I'll see you boys next time where we're doing resource gathering and crafting. Until then, roll your own everything.